when pilot Lieutenant Jim Lloyd took off from the supercarrier USS Saratoga on a reconnaissance mission during the Vietnam War, he could not predict the dramatic events about to unfold. As he crossed into enemy territory, Lloyd's A-7 Corsair was hit by a SAM missile, and he was forced to eject. A ferocious Viet Cong search operation ensued. The young pilot had to rush through the jungle as bullets flew around him. When he was about to be cornered, Lloyd dropped to the ground and played dead, holding his breath even as enemy soldiers poked him with their rifles. Meanwhile, a daring mission was being planned at Saratoga, and several aircraft were sent to look for the fallen airman. Even as uncertainty engulfed them, the men aboard USS Saratoga were prepared to do anything to bring their friend back on deck, cementing the reputation of the crew and the ship as an exemplary force unwilling to leave a man behind. USS Saratoga USS Saratoga was the second of four innovative Forrestal-class U.S. Navy supercarriers built in the 1950s. This was the first completed class of supercarriers, labeled as such due to their high tonnage and size, which exceeded 75,000 tons. The Forrestal class was over 25% larger and heavier than the World War II-era Midway aircraft carriers. Furthermore, it was unique because of the ship's large island, full integration of the angled deck, and numerous air wing capacities of over 80 and 100 jet aircraft. Due to their size, Forrestal class ships incorporated the armored flight deck into the new deep hulled design. Other perks included the large flight decks and spacious hangar decks. And compared to the Midway class, the deeper hull of this new supercarrier allowed the ships more freeboard for optimal sea keeping. Even so, the design was not without its flaws. The elevators were inadequately arranged for handling jet aircraft, and the Sponson-mounted guns had poor range as they were located in wet positions in the bow. In July of 1952, the New York Naval Shipyard was awarded a contract to build USS Saratoga. Her keel was laid down in December of 1952. She was launched three years later, and then commissioned in April of 1956 with U.S. Navy Captain Joseph Stroh at the command. Saratoga displaced over 82,000 tons under full load, had a length of 1,063 feet, a beam of 130 feet, and a draft of 37 feet. She was initially armed with 827mm Mark 42 guns, and was later upgraded with Sea Sparrow missiles and the Phalanx SeaWiz system. The ship was also equipped with ANSPS-48 2D and 3D air search radar and ANSPS-10 surface radar. Notably, the supercarrier had four Westinghouse geared turbines that powered four geared steam turbines and allowed the vessel to reach speeds of up to 40 miles per hour. Mediterranean Service Following her commission, USS Saratoga conducted several tests off the coast of the eastern United States. Then, on June 6, 1957, President Dwight D. Eisenhower and his cabinet went aboard Saratoga to observe 18 ships that conducted anti-submarine operations, counter-missile tests, and aircraft bombing techniques. Eisenhower also witnessed the landing of two F-8U Crusaders that flew from the west coast to the flight deck of Saratoga in the Atlantic, crossing the entire United States in 3 hours 28 minutes. In 1957, Saratoga conducted tests with Regulus guided missiles, making her one of only six U.S. ships equipped with nuclear weapons as part of the Navy's Nuclear Strategic Deterrence Force. Saratoga was not only a formidable feat of naval engineering, but also part of America's guarantee against a nuclear Armageddon. The ship departed for Norway in September, where she participated in the NATO naval maneuvers of Operation Strike Back. Months later, she was deployed to the Mediterranean with the Sixth Fleet. During the early hours of May 25, 1960, Saratoga collided with the German freighter Bernd Leinhardt off North Carolina. The ship suffered minimal damage, but paid the freighter over 2.5 million German marks for repairs. Then, while deployed with the Sixth Fleet in the Mediterranean in January of 1961, the supercarrier would face its first major trial as an unexpected fire broke out in one of her machinery spaces. The flames spread quickly, trapping many sailors below deck in a contained but violent inferno. Seven sailors lost their lives during the incident, 
and subsequent investigations concluded that the fire was provoked by a ruptured fuel oil line. As such, the ship made its way to Athens for repairs. Almost seven years later, Saratoga's medical facilities were used to assist wounded men from the Israeli attack on USS Liberty, where 34 men lost their lives during the chaotic international mishap that strained Israeli-American relations to the limit. Months later, Saratoga collided for a second time with the cruiser Little Rock after miscommunications between both vessels. The ship underwent extensive refueling in 1968 and became the host ship for President Nixon's Armed Forces Day on May 17, 1969. Nevertheless, after years of peaceful operations, fate would drag USS Saratoga towards a major conflict. Saving Lieutenant Lloyd On May 8, 1972, USS Saratoga was deployed for the first time into the Vietnam War. In contrast to her other Forrestal-class sisters, Saratoga served briefly in the Indochina conflict, and her support would become crucial for the American men fighting on the ground. The supercarrier arrived at Yankee Station on May 18th to begin a months-long series of operations focused on air support and aerial strikes over North Vietnam. She was also reclassified as a multi-purpose aircraft carrier, CV-60, on January 7th. Right after starting operations, Saratoga lost four planes during fierce dogfights against Soviet-made fighters over the skies of North Vietnam. However, the American pilots soon gained the upper hand and began to drastically flip the kill ratio. On August 6, 1972, Lieutenant Jim Lloyd took off from Saratoga, bound for a vital armed reconnaissance flight over North Vietnam. Suddenly, disaster struck when about 150 miles north of the DMZ, hostile fire from a North Vietnamese surface-to-air missile struck Lloyd's A-7 Corsair, and he had to immediately eject his plane. The pilot made it safely to the ground and instantly used his radio to inform his position. Grady L. Jackson of the Sunday Punchers took off from Saratoga, along with his wingman, to look for Lloyd and evaluate the odds of a rescue attempt. The pilots established contact with the downed airman, but he was in a dire situation. Jackson would recall, quote, As Jim was trying to escape the fiery wreckage, he heard footsteps along the path near a rice paddy. He lay face down in the muddy paddy and played dead. The footsteps stopped, and he felt someone poking him with a gun. When the soldiers stepped away, he jumped up and ran, bullets flying all around him. Jackson did not hesitate to greenlight a daring rescue operation, and soon the H-3 rescue helicopter took off to save the pilot. As the helicopter arrived in the position, darkness and rugged terrain made landing impossible. Lloyd was told to reposition and ran as fast as he could, just as bullets were grazing his head. Finally, the helicopter was able to touch down and save Lloyd, seconds before he was seized by the Viet Cong. Terrorist Showdown USS Saratoga conducted over 800 airstrike sorties in Vietnam during the short time she was deployed to the region. After 1973, she left Vietnam and returned to service under the Pacific Fleet, participating in numerous large-scale NATO exercises. Saratoga eventually became the first U.S. ship to undergo the Service Life Extension Program, a massive 28-month overhaul of her systems that transformed the aging carrier into a state-of-the-art warship. After revamping her many combat systems, the ship took off on her 18th voyage, which would turn out to be exceptionally dramatic. Saratoga was again deployed to the Mediterranean in 1985 and was called into action only a few months into her mission. The Italian luxury liner Achille Lauro had been hijacked by terrorists from the Palestinian Liberation Front. The terrorists became violent as negotiations faltered, and they began taking the lives of hostages, including an American tourist. The cruise liner went ashore at Port Said, where the Egyptian authorities succumbed to the pressure and provided the terrorists with an Egypt Air 737 jetliner to escape. President Ronald Reagan ordered Saratoga to intercede, and the supercarrier launched seven F-14 Tomcats, supported by VA-85 Grumman KA-60 air tankers and an E-2C Hawkeye. The American warplanes intercepted the hijacked airliner in an aggressive move that left them with few options. The Tomcats then forced the airliner to land at Naval Air Station Sigonella in Italy. The terrorists were immediately arrested, and the Tomcats returned to Saratoga 
after achieving their mission without a single shot fired. For the next five years, Saratoga continued her service in the Mediterranean, often becoming the protagonist of tense standoffs against Soviet forces during the Cold War. Retirement During the evening of September 27, 1987, a U.S. Navy F-14 Tomcat operating from Saratoga was accidentally shot down by a U.S. Air Force Phantom II operating from Zweibrücken Air Base, West Germany. The incident took place over the Mediterranean during NATO exercise Display Determination 87. The two Tomcat pilots safely ejected and were rescued by Saratoga within 30 minutes. When the war broke out against Iraq following the invasion of Kuwait, USS Saratoga was deployed to the Red Sea as part of Operation Desert Storm. The ship made her way through the Suez Canal six times and launched over 11,000 aircraft launch and recovery cycles. Saratoga launched several support operations and even helped Navy SEALs aboard the ship conduct wartime boardings against merchant vessels. In 1992, the ship participated in exercise display determination in the Aegean Sea. During the simulations, Saratoga crewmen erroneously fired two RIM-7 Sea Sparrow missiles, hitting the Turkish ship Moabinet. Following this mistake, Saratoga was decommissioned in 1994. Even so, there was a failed attempt to convert the ship into a museum, and Saratoga was finally scrapped in 2019. The influential vessel, which valiantly guarded U.S. interests for four decades, was finally put to rest. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical and technological content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.